Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely proud, and the last stop is extremely proud to present Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> Uh, I have to record a CD, so I have to tell all the jokes I have. Because I want to put them, I've never recorded a CD before. I've told a lot of these jokes before. <laughs> but I gotta put them on a CD now, see? So, it's all gonna spread it out. Put all these jokes on a CD right here. These are the CD jokes. <laughs> thought of it today. <laughs> I, I, I whittled the list down today. These are the jokes that I can think of today. <laughs> Which means they are the CD jokes. <laughs> I might think of another one that won't be on this list. And I'll throw it in in a moment of spontaneity that you won't be able to detect. Because <laughs> you won't notice that it's not on the list. But I will be proud of the spontaneity, <laughs> and you'll see it in my stride. <laughs> so don't fuck up the bass tonight, Chuck, because we're on a CD here. <laughs> Just fucking keep it, keep it going. Don't fuck up a scale. <laughs> this joke's all gonna go right here. So I wish I could play Little E now. I'd kick some fucking ass. <laughs> I'd be way better than before. It back up now. All right. That joke kicked off the CD right there. <laughs> kind of weak, man. I got an ant farm. Them fellas didn't grow shit. <laughs> what, about, what about some carrots, maybe, for me? I like carrots. I dressed up for the CD. <laughs> I haven't slept for 10 days because that would be too long. <laughs> How long can a CD be? <laughs> I might have to do two tonight. I don't know, I'm kidding. That'd be too much comedy for me. My apartment is infested with koala bears. It's the cutest infestation ever. Way better than cockroaches. When I turn on the light, a bunch of koala bears scatter. And I don't want them to, you know? I'm like, hey, hold on, fellas. Let me hold one of you. <laughs> and feed you a leaf. Why do koala bears, they're so fucking cute. Why, why do they have to be so far away from me? We need to ship a few over and I will apprehend one. And hold them, all right. And pet them on the back of his head. I've always wanted to have a suitcase handcuffed to my wrist. <laughs> All right. It's not a full joke there. That's filler. It's filler, one of the lists is bending up. I can't read it. <laughs> All right, last week I helped my friends stay put. It's a lot easier than helping someone move. I just went over to his house and made sure that he did not start to load shit into a truck. <laughs> My friend asked me if I wanted a frozen banana. If I said no, but I want a regular banana later, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
A guy told me he liked cherries, but I waited to see if he was going to say tomato before I realized he liked cherries just. All right, that joke is ridiculous. That's like a carbon copy of the previous joke with different ingredients. I don't know what I was trying to pull off there. That one might be edited. I can edit the jokes. I have a few cavities. I don't like to call them cavities. I like to call them places to put stuff. <laughs> Do you know where I can store a pee? <laughs> yes, I have some locations available. <laughs> I got my hair highlighted because I thought some strands were more important than others. <laughs> I wrote my friend a letter using a highlighting pen but he could not read it. He thought I was trying to show him certain parts of a piece of paper. <laughs> so check that. Uh, I had my palm read. I wrote something on it first to see if she would read that too. <laughs> All right. So I mumble a lot off stage. I'm a mumbler. If I'm walking with a friend and I say something, he won't hear me. He'll say, what? So I'll say it again, but once again, he doesn't hear me. So he says, what? But really, it's just some insignificant shit that I'm saying. But now I'm yelling, that tree is far away. <laughs> I want to be a race car passenger. <laughs> just a guy who bugs the driver. Say, man, can I turn on the radio? You should slow down. <laughs> Why we gotta keep going in circles? <laughs> Can I put my feet out the window? <laughs> Man, you really like Thai. <laughs> some of those responses, some of those laughs and claps I'll use for other jokes that didn't work. <laughs> I will make it seem as though you fuckers laughed at unfunny shit. <laughs> I'm gonna use you. <laughs> I'm gonna make a whole joke of unfunny jokes and put your laughs into it and then list you individually on the CD. <laughs> These people don't like funny jokes. Or they uh. You should never tell someone they have a nice dimple because maybe they're shot in the face with a BB gun. I was on the Craig Kilborn show. The next day I flew to Minneapolis. I was at the airport and a guy came up. He said, dude, I saw you on TV last night. But he did not say whether or not he thought it was good. He just confirmed that I was on television. <laughs> so I turned my head away from him for about a minute. Then I turned it back. I said, dude, I saw you at the airport. <laughs> about a minute ago. <laughs> you were good. I wrote a letter to my dad, I was gonna write, I really enjoy being here, but I accidentally wrote rarely instead of really. <laughs> well, I wanted to use it, I didn't want to cross it out, so I, I wrote, I rarely drive steamboats, Dad. <laughs> There's a lot of shit you don't know about me. <laughs> Quit trying to act like I'm a steamboat operator. <laughs> I know this letter took a harsh turn right away. <laughs> Hello, Dad. At the end of my letters, I, I like to write, P.S. This is what part of the alphabet would look like if Q and R were eliminated. <laughs> I got into an argument with a girlfriend inside of a tent. That's a bad place for an argument, because then I tried to walk out and slam the flap. <laughs> How are you supposed to express your anger in this situation? Zipper it up really quick. <laughs> Fuck you. I think Bigfoot is blurry. That's the problem. It's not the photographer's fault. Bigfoot is blurry. And that's extra scary to me. Because there's a large, out of focus monster roaming the countryside. Run, he's fuzzy. Get out of here. You gotta go. Uh, one time a guy handed me a picture of me and said, here's a picture of me when I was younger. 
every picture of you when you were younger. Here's a picture of me when I'm older. You son of a bitch. How'd you pull that off? Let me see that camera. What's it look like? I got a roommate. I live in New York City. I got a roommate to save money. But see, I fucked up because I'm 31. I'm too old for a roommate. I fucked up severely. I signed a year lease too. I really fucked up. It's like I wrote a joke that didn't work, but now I have to tell it for a year. <laughs> so, so, see, my roommate said, he goes, I need to shave and use the shower. Does anyone need to use the bathroom? It's like some weird ass quiz where he reveals the answer first. Every time, every time I go and shave, I assume there's someone else on the planet shaving. So I say, I'm gonna go shave too. <laughs> Sometimes I wave to people I don't know. Very dangerous to wave to someone you don't know because what if they don't have a hand? They'll think you're cocky. Look what I got, motherfucker. This thing is useful. I'm gonna go pick something up. <laughs> My sister wanted to be an actress. She never made it, but she does live in a trailer. She got halfway. <laughs> so she's an actress, she just never called to the set. <laughs> on a traffic light, green means go, and yellow means yield. But on a banana, it's just the opposite. Green means hold on. Yellow means go ahead. And red means where the fuck did you get that banana at? <laughs> Sometimes a hotel this day have a mini bar. A mini bar is a machine that makes everything expensive. Right? And when I take something out of the mini bar, I always fathom that I'm gonna replace it before they can check me off and charge me. But they make that shit impossible to replace. I go to the store and say, do you have Coke in a glass harmonica? <laughs> Do you have individually wrapped cashews? <laughs> you can't please all the people all the time, and last night all those people were at my show. <laughs> I'm against picketing, but I don't know how to show it. I need, a, I need a sporadic applause on the CD, boy. That applause will be duplicated. It's gonna be after every joke. The CD is gonna be six hours long. Six jokes. Just looped laughter. I like to close my eyes on the stage because I've drawn a picture of an audience enjoying the show more on the back of my eyelids. Carrots got you drunk, rabbits would be fucked up. <laughs> I like vending machines because snacks are better when they fall. <laughs> if I buy a candy bar at a store, oftentimes I will drop it <laughs> so that it achieves its maximum flavor potential. I bought a seven dollar pen because I always lose pens and I got sick of not caring. <laughs> I think pickles are cucumbers that sold out. They sold their soul to the devil. And the devil was dill. <laughs> this, is, this jokes are stupid. I bought a donut and they gave me a receipt for the donut. I don't need a receipt for the donut, man. I'll just give you the money, then you give me the donut and the transaction. We don't need to bring ink and paper into this. I just can't imagine a scenario where I would have to prove that I bought a donut. Some skeptical friend, don't even act like I didn't get that donut. I got the documentation right here. Oh, wait, it's at home. 
in the file. Under D. Sometimes I wake up and I think I should start wearing a beret. But I don't do it. One day I'm gonna though. You bet your ass. I will have a beret on. <laughs> That's ridiculous, but it's true. I always fight. I always fight with wearing a beret. Is it time? <laughs> Sometimes I make some money doing comedy. I made $3,000 opening for the Neville Brothers and they paid me in cash, so I had $3,000 in my front pocket. And that was a bad situation because then I started to buy ridiculous shit. Like I bought a snake bite emergency repair kit. <laughs> that I said to my friends, don't even worry about snakes anymore. <laughs> and then my friend stepped on a worm. I said, lay down. <laughs> Snake bite emergency repair kit is a body bag. <laughs> I was walking down the street with my friend and he said, I hear music. As though there's any other way you can take it in. You're not special. That's how I receive it too. I tried to taste it, but it did not work. You know how they call corn on the cob? Corn on the cob, right? But that's how it comes out of the ground, man. They should call that corn. They should call every other version corn off the cob. It's not like if you cut off my arm, you would call my arm Mitch. But then reattach it and call it Mitch altogether. <laughs> Chocolate makes me happy, I have to admit. I had a Velcro wallet in a casino. That fucking noise drove the shit out of me, man. That casino losing money bust out the Velcro wallet again. It's like a fucking sound of my addiction. I love to gamble, you know. I booked myself in Las Vegas at the casino. There's a Riviera Hotel has a comedy club. And there's four comedians on the bill. And we all have similar hair because we're all using the Riviera in-house shampoo. <laughs> so we all have equal shine and bounce. <laughs> it's a two-in-one shampoo. And two-in-one is a bullshit term because one is not big enough to hold two. <laughs> That's why two was created. If it was two and one, it would be overflowing. <laughs> the bottle would be all sticky and shit. <laughs> As a comedian, you have to start the show strong and you have to end the show strong. Those are the two key elements. You can't be like pancakes, all exciting at first, but then by the end, you're fucking sick of them. <laughs> A, wa a waffle is like a pancake with a syrup trap. <laughs> I put fruit on top of my waffles because I want something to brush off. <laughs> you know, I have a cheese shredder at home. That's a positive name for a cheese shredder. They don't call it by its negative name because nobody would buy it. Sponge Ruiner. <laughs> because I wanted to clean it. But now I have little bits of sponge that would melt easily over tortilla chips. I know a lot about cars, man. I can, I can look at a car's headlights and tell you exactly which way it's coming. <laughs> I, say, I say the word totally too much. I use the word totally way too much. I need to change it and use a word that is different but means the same thing. Mitch, do you like submarine sandwiches? All encompassingly. <laughs> This shirt is dry clean only, which means it's dirty. <laughs> right, thanks, that's Chuck there. How about a round of applause for Chuck? He does.
I've seen a human pyramid before. It was very unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't need to exist. It was pure danger. I play sports. No, I don't. What the fuck? <laughs> that was a major full call. I play golf. I'm not good at golf. I never got a hole in one. But I did hit a guy. <laughs> and that's way more satisfying. <laughs> You're supposed to yell four, but I was too busy mumbling. There ain't no way that's going to hit him. I exfoliated my skin for this show. <laughs> I exfoliated with some very small apricots. <laughs> the club owner here, when he comes to town, he hooks up with drugs, like he'll give you cocaine and pop brownies. But last time I was in town, he, he gave me a drug for attention deficit disorder, because he's afflicted. But I'm not. So what happened to me was I suddenly had an extra long attention span. And people would be telling me a story, then the story would end, and I'd get all mad and shit. <laughs> Come on, man, there's gotta be more to that story. I'm on pills here. I have a friend who's a juggler, and when I go to his house, I don't like to take food from him if it's in threes. He has three apples left. I guess I can't have one. <laughs> Won't want to fuck up the practice routine. All right. I have a hotel room and my friend comes over. He says, can I use a phone? I says, certainly. He says, do I need to dial nine? Yeah, especially if it's in the number. <laughs> you can try four and five back to back real quick. My lucky number is four billion. That doesn't come real handy when you're gambling. <laughs> come on, four billion. <laughs> Fuck, seven. <laughs> Not even close. I need some more dice. <laughs> four billion divided by six, at least. <laughs> Snake, eyes. <laughs> Snake eyes now. <laughs> I just said snake eye. <laughs> it's a gambling term. Oh, it's an animal term, too. <laughs> Popsicles are for the summertime. <laughs> I like to play blackjack. I'm not addicted to gambling. I'm addicted to sitting in a semicircle. <laughs> I just realized how useful this table is. Because of this table, everything's a little bit closer to me. But I take it for granted. <laughs> I try to act like it's just like the floor. But it's not. It's a little higher. I was in a park, I saw a kid flying a kite. He was so excited that his kite was in the sky. I don't know why, that's what they're supposed to do. Now had he had a chair on the other end of that string, I would have known. Imagine trying to fly a chair. You'd have to run like a motherfucker. <laughs> it's my one hour of slow time, so just stay, stay with me through the end of this recording. I got my necklace. A necklace pulls my hair every now and then. It's weird. I think someone's behind me. <laughs> Just my necklace. <laughs> if, you had, if you had a friend who was a tightrope walker and you were walking down the sidewalk with him and he fell, that would be completely unacceptable. <laughs> I don't own a cell phone or a pager. I just hang around everyone I know all the time. <laughs> Someone needs to get a hold of me, they just say, Mitch. And I say, what? And turn my head slightly. <laughs> I 
I hope the next time I move, I get a real easy phone number, something that's easy to remember. Something like two, 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 two. I would say, sweet. And then people would say, Mitch, how'd I get a hold of you? I say, just press two for a while. <laughs> and when I answer, you will know you will press two or no. <laughs> Some companies like to use their, like to spell out a word to, so you call them up and remember the name, but they use too many letters, you know, because they can't, they can't edit it. Give us a call at 1 800 I love brand new carpet. <laughs> I go, I, I like to press all the buttons, you know. I spell that fucker out to the bitter end. And if the operator's still there, God bless her. I never say God bless her on stage, that's gonna be edited. God bless her, what the fuck is that? That's not my style. I'm not the kind of guy who says, God bless her. We leave that to other comics. Other comics say, God bless her way better than I do. I say it badly. I was on that 70s show, one episode, and I put it on my acting resume. Before that, my acting resume. It was my first acting gig and I put it on my resume. My acting resume before that was sparse. It was full of bullshit. I had to make things up. Acting experience. Okay, when I play pool, if I make a shot, I act like I'm not surprised. <laughs> I had a bad audition. I acted like I didn't care. So as a comedian, I always get these situations where I'm auditioning for movies and sitcoms, you know? As a comedian, they want you to do other things besides comedy. They say, all right, you're a comedian. Can you write? Write us a script. Act. Act in this sitcom. They want me to do shit that's related to comedy, but it's not comedy, man. It's not fair, you know? It's as though if I was a cook, then I worked my ass off to become a really good cook. They said, all right, you're a cook. Can you farm? <laughs> I wrote a script, and I gave it to a guy who read scripts, and he read it. He said he really likes it, but he thinks I need to rewrite it. I said, fuck that, I'll just make a copy. <laughs> I, go to, I go to Kinko's. Because Kinko's is my favorite copy center if I had to pick one, because they're open 24 hours. You know, that's great. Like if it's 5 a.m. and then I decide I need two of something, <laughs> I'm covered. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. I say, oh shit, oh yeah, Kinko's. <laughs> No problem. That will not remain singular. I just injured my teeth on a CD. I injured my teeth. I hate flossing. I just wish I had one long curvy tooth. It didn't need to be split up. Damn. They didn't have to make separations with me. With that, my tooth would have fell out, it would have been bad. <laughs> oh, Chuck's bringing it down. All right, that's what I, I like it. You don't think I didn't notice, though. I don't want to watch, because I want my arms to weigh the same. So when someone asks me what time it is, I just have to tell them something that's happening, hoping that will help. What time is it? Uh, that guy's eating a hamburger. <laughs> Shit, I have to be somewhere. <laughs> I'll meet you when that guy's eating a hamburger. <laughs> Fuck, which guy? You'll know. <laughs> the club, when they want you to get off stage, they turn on a red light. That indicates that you have five minutes left. Some clubs will hold up a candle in the back, man. <laughs> That's the worst method, because you're up here drinking. Then you look in the back, you see a floating candle. <laughs> oh shit, this place is haunted. <laughs> I can't be funny when I'm frightened. <laughs> on the back of a box of Rick, Ritz crackers, it has all these suggestions as to what to put on top of the Ritz. It says, put some lunch meat up there. Try some peanut butter, man. But I like crackers, that's why I got them, man. You, you got no faith in the product itself. 
on the back of a bag of lunch meat that has all these suggestions as to what to slip underneath the lunch meat. <laughs> slip some bread under there. It's too slimy and cold <laughs> to be held onto. I think Pringles' initial intention was to make tennis balls. <laughs> but on the day that the rubber was supposed to show up, a big truckload of potatoes arrived. <laughs> and Pringles is a laid-back company. They said, fuck it, cut them off. <laughs> I'm almost done, I think. How much time have I done? 45 minutes? All right, good. So, if you don't, it's six people ain't gonna convince me to. Severed foot is the ultimate stocking stuffer. <laughs> I tried, I tried to fre freshen up a room, so I held a search in front of a fan. Uh, these are just, these are throwaway jokes. I used to be a hot towel roofer. Yeah, I remember that day. <laughs> I like an escalator, because an escalator can never break. It can only become stairs. <laughs> you, you would never see an escalator temporarily out of order sign. Just escalator temporarily stairs. <laughs> Sorry for the convenience. We apologize for the fact that you can still get up there. I tried, to, I tried to have a cookie, and this girl said, I'm mailing those cookies to my friend, so I couldn't have one. You shouldn't make cookies untouchable. <laughs> All right. My manager takes 10% from me. Sometimes I work for free drinks. Bring him home a Jack and Coke. <laughs> I'm out to dinner with a group of friends and someone offers to pay for the check. I immediately reach for my wallet because inside is a note that says, say thanks. <laughs> I used to do drugs, I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> I used to have really long hair and people thought I was high on stage because people associate long hair with drug use. I wish long hair was associated with something other than drug use. Like an extreme longing for cake. <laughs> and then strangers would see a long hair guy and say, that fucker eats cake. <laughs> he is on bunk cake. <laughs> Mother saying to their daughters, don't bring the cake eater over here anymore. <laughs> he smell like flour. Did you see how excited he got when he found out your birthday was fast approaching? <laughs> this is my friend said to me, said, you know what, I like mashed potatoes. It's like, dude, you had to give me time to guess. <laughs> if you're gonna quiz me, you have to insert a pause. <laughs> Seven minutes left. <laughs> Seven minutes of pure fucking hardcore comedy. <laughs> it's hardcore. This shit's rough here. This is a rough section of my act right here. I say this for last. Gets a little blue. I, lo I love the bass, man. Any, any moment of silence is no longer bad. It's like there's something going on. I like that. I saw a band in New York City, it was a rock and roll outfit called Monster Magnet, and the singer got on the microphone. This is what he said, he said, all right, how many people feel like human beings tonight? And they say, all right, how many people feel like animals? And everybody cheered out to the animals part. But the thing is, I cheered out to the human beings part, because I did not know that there was a second part to the question.
I saw a jar of jelly beans is having a contest at this fair. So guess how many jelly beans are in the jar and you win a prize? Oh, come on, man. Let me just have some. <laughs> Let's make a compromise. You guess how many I want. <laughs> if you said a handful, you are right. <laughs> so I could imagine taking. I wake up in the morning and make myself a bowl of instant oatmeal, then I don't do shit for an hour. <laughs> Which makes me wonder why I need the instant oatmeal. I could get the regular oatmeal and feel productive. <laughs> what are you gonna do, make oatmeal? You know it. Spaghetti. I, I can't eat spaghetti, there's too many of them. <laughs> no matter how hungry I am, 1,000 or something is too many. I have 1,000 pieces of noodle. <laughs> Fettuccine Alfredo is macaroni and cheese for adults. <laughs> All right. I like cinnamon rolls. That's why I wish they made a cinnamon roll incense, because I don't always have time to make a pan. Perhaps I'd rather light a stick than have my roommates wake up with false hopes. <laughs> I'm gonna take the money that I made from this gig and buy a Dr. Pepper belt buckle. It's for sale at the Allen Park Inn at $25. It's an antique. It's an antique. It was the only one they made of it, I believe. But it's just no one ever bought it. So now it's an antique. They're trying to hide the fact that no one ever bought it. It's an antique now. All right. I will have it then. I did a radio interview. The DJ's first question was, who are you? I had to think, is this guy really deep or did I drive to the wrong station? <laughs> I had a bag of Fritos. They were Texas grill Fritos. These Fritos had grill marks on them. Hell yeah, reminds me of summer when we used to fire up the barbecue and throw down on some Fritos. I can still see my dad with the apron on. You better flip that Frito, dad. You know how I like it. <laughs> With real marks. People ask me for my autograph after the show. I'm not famous, I think they're fucking with me. They're trying to make me late for something. <laughs> I went to sign that autograph. I'd be here. Velcro wallet I already talked about. Suitcase that I handcuffed to my arm I already talked about. I gotta give me one of those going though. That'd be the coolest thing ever. Alright. Say, so, uh, I was in Ireland. I got to drink absinthe in Ireland. And absinthe is a liquor that they outlawed. It's supposed to make you trip hallucinogenically. So I got excited because I like to hallucinate. So I started drinking lots of shots of it. But really, it's just a liquor. So I was just getting fucked up. <laughs> I wasn't even remotely tripping. But after 10 shots, I fell to the ground and I was trying to force the trip. Why is the floor as low as I can go? But I was just faking it, you know? It wasn't from the heart trip. It was force. Why is lemonade not aiding me? <laughs> acid was my favorite drug because acid opened up my mind. Because of acid, I now know that butter is way better than margarine. I saw through the bullshit. When I was on acid, I would see things like beams of light. And I'd hear sounds that sounded an awful lot like car horns. When we were on acid, we were going to the woods because when you're in the woods tripping, there's less likely a chance you run into an authority figure. We ran into a bear. That was even more of a buzz kill. My friend Dwayne was standing there raising his right hand, swearing to help prevent forest fires. We got away from the bear, put his arm around my shoulder. He said, Mitchell, Smokey is way more intense in person. He's an asshole. I went to England to tell jokes. I wanted to do Smokey the Bear joke in England, so I had to ask the English if they know Smokey the Bear was, but they don't. Because in England, Smokey the Bear is not the forest fire prevention representative. They have Smacky the Frog. 
just like a bear, but it's a frog. I think that's a better system. I think we should adopt it because bears can be mean, but frogs are always cool. Like never has there been a frog hopping toward me, and I thought, man, I better play dead. Here comes that frog. I've never said, here comes that frog in a nervous manner. It's always like optimistic. Hey, here comes that frog. All right. Maybe he will settle near me and I can pet him and put him in a mayonnaise jar with a stick and a leaf to recreate what he's used to. I certainly have to punch some holes in the lid because he's damn sure used to air. <laughs> then I can observe him, and he won't be doing much in his 16-ounce world. <laughs> I like to talk about the differences between frogs and bears. Like when there's a frog around, I don't have to hang my fucking sandwiches from a branch. <laughs> a frog knows they are for me. He'd rather have a fly, because the fly zigzags, and my sandwiches do not. Unless I go like this. If I want some honey on some toast, I don't have to squeeze a plastic frog. <laughs> Alcoholism is a disease, but it's the only disease that you can get yelled at for having. Goddamn it, Otto, you're an alcoholic. Goddamn it, Otto, you have lupus. One of those two doesn't sound right. <laughs> if you have to release bad news to the public, it will help if you are not ugly. I have a loose neck shirt, because my neck's fragile. I can't wear a regular shirt, it hurts. I especially hate turtlenecks. I wear a turtleneck, it's like being strangled by a really weak guy. <laughs> All fucking day. <laughs> if you wear a turtleneck in a backpack, it's like a weak midget trying to bring you down. sisters and one of them saying Wendy if you ask Wendy if I was weird she'd probably say yeah but that's fucked up because she's weird because she has a husband and two children and they have a family photo on top of their VCR where they're all looking slightly to the left <laughs> as though something's going on over there <laughs> the camera is right in front of you <laughs> but I guess something happened to the left <laughs> that made everybody happy So my sister is cross-eyed, so she can't quite pull it off. <laughs> One eye is right the fuck on. <laughs> you know they advertise a casino on a billboard, they always show a picture of a guy winning money? But that's false advertising, because that's what happens at least. Perhaps when they advertise a hamburger, they could show a guy choking. <laughs> this is what happened once. I was at a casino, I was minding my own business. This guy came up, he said, you're gonna have to move, you're blocking the fire exit. So if there was a fire, I wasn't gonna run. <laughs> if you're flammable and have legs, you are never blocking a fire exit. <laughs> and you can write that down and put a dash in front of it and put my name at the bottom. <laughs> a dash. <laughs> Dash, that's all I wanted to be doing was dashed. <laughs> I type 101 words a minute, but it's in my own language. <laughs> I had the AIDS test four times. The AIDS test is very scary to get. It doesn't matter what you've been doing, waiting for the results is frightening. So I don't get the regular AIDS test anymore. I get the round and about AIDS test. I call my friend Brian. I say, say Brian, do you know anybody who has AIDS? 
No. Cool. Because you know me. I was, on, I was on a bus and it was the middle of the night and I had a box of crackers and a can of Easy Cheese. But it was the middle of the night so I could not see. I could not see how much Easy Cheese I was applying to each cracker. So each bite into the cracker was a surprise as to how much Easy Cheese I had applied. Which makes me believe they should have a glow-in-the-dark version of Easy Cheese. It's not like the product has any integrity to begin with. If you buy a room temperature cheese that you squeeze out of a can, you probably won't get mad because it glows in the dark too. I think I got all the jokes I wanted to get on the CD down. Now, I think I want a couple more things. I want to get a tape recorder. I got a parrot instead. So, <laughs> I think I did that joke backwards. I want to get a parrot if I got a tape recorder. It's like a parrot who doesn't fly away. You don't have to worry about a tape recorder just suddenly leaving in the name of freedom. Say, I said, some songs have a special meaning for a man in regards to a special woman. But this can backfire, because maybe the song had deeper meaning to begin with, but now it's been cheapened. We are the world, we are the children, we are the ones who make a better life, so let's keep on giving. Remember that song, baby? The night I fucked you in the pet cemetery? <laughs> That's our song. We go to a restaurant on the weekends, it's busy, so they start a waiting list. They start calling out names. They say, Dufresne, party of two. Table ready for Dufresne, party of two. And if no one answers, they'll say the name again. Dufresne, party of two. But then if no one answers, they'll just go right on to the next name. Bush, party of three. Yeah, what happened to the Dufresne? No one seems to give a shit. Who can eat at a time like this? People are missing. You fuckers are selfish. <laughs> the Dufresne's are in someone's trunk right now with duct tape over their mouth and they're hungry. That's a double whammy. We need help. Bush, search party of three. You can eat once you find the Dufresne. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chuck, too. Thank you. Thank you.